the meditation of God's law in the day is what we call quiet time. Quiet time. And, and quiet time is the first step to entering into meditating in God's law. Anybody who doesn't do quiet time does not delight in God's word. So every camp I always teach. Whether you've heard it 5,000 times, I don't care. Because there are people here who haven't heard it before. I teach. Like Bishop said, in the, there was a table here and a lady, Auntie Betty, taught him how to have his quiet time. And if you listen to Bishop, you tell you, you say that he's, he says that almost every single one of the things he preaches come from his quiet time. You, you, you know, let me just give you the four prophets. Of, how many of you want to know the profit you can make from the word? It's not by selling Bible so. Some of you steal Bibles in church and go and sell. As for you, I don't even need to curse you. The Bible says, 2 Timothy 3.16. Let me do this quickly. Maybe I'll just give you the first one. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Now, one of the things that is going to happen when you are a student of God's word is that God will give you doctrine. And what is doctrine? Doctrine is a set of teachings. And from the doctrine that God will give unto you, you will make a profit. Today in the world, if you talk about the doctrine of loyalty and disloyalty, one name will immediately come to your mind, and that name is Bishop Dag Heward Mills. Don't, don't clap, I'm coming. Let me, you clap. Just let me. And by the grace of God, Bishop Dag Heward Mills has profited from their doctrine. Lady Pastor Ivy was talking about how at first children's church it was just somewhere to keep the children. And then Reverend Oko came with a teaching that children's church is not just babysitting, but children's church is a place where we pastor the children and preach God's word to them. It's also a church. And Reverend Oko has profited from that doctrine. Listen, how did I get that doctrine? I was having my quiet time one morning and my quiet time that day was Matthew 18. And Matthew 18 verse 5 says, Whosoever receives one such little one in my name receives me. I know it means nothing to you. But to me it meant a lot. So I said to myself, Pastor Amso, is God saying that when I receive one child in your name in my church, I am receiving Jesus? Then I said, I want more than one Jesus. Because then, because then I had 12. Every Sunday, I was ministering to 12 Jesuses. And I said, no, 12 is too small. I said, I want more. Before I realized... I had 35 Jesuses every Sunday morning. Before I realized, I had 50 Jesuses every Sunday morning. Before I realized, I had 100 Jesuses every Sunday morning. To the glory of God, last month, no, not two months ago, the month of May, in the Kodesh, the Sunday attendance for saved is 1,747. 1,000. Jesuses. Jesus, 1,747. You, your church, there are only five of you. When I tell you thousand, you won't clap for me. But you are sitting there and watching me. You are your church, you are only four. 
You say you are doing white church. Last week, white church, not J church, not saved, white church, white church, first service, we were 212. Listen, second service, we were 535. You woke up. Yeah. You see? Ah, we have a we have a big problem with space now. Why? Because I delighted myself in the law, and the profit I got was a doctrine. You know, recently I went to the US and I met one of our pastors who used to be here, who is now in America. And he told me something I never knew. But I met two pastors like that. Two pastors. One of them said to me, <laughs> We remember those days when you were appointed pastor and there were little, little children following you. And he told me, So remember, you wear coats and you have little, little children pass following you. And you say you were a pastor. He said, we used to laugh. Yeah. He said, but now we've had to swallow our laughter. Because we are here struggling. And we watch you as you travel to Australia. Travel to Switzerland. Travel to the UK. Travel to the US. Oh, you don't understand English. Yeah. The last trip I went to the US, I took my messages. I sold more than one thousand dollars worth of my messages. To the the money doesn't come to me; it comes straight into the saved account. I don't even want the money. It's, I, I'm not doing this for money. Thousands of dollars on doctrine. That's why you say you want to become supermodel. You fast and fast and fast and fast. Then you get anorexia, anemia, uh, this thing, uh, this thing, cerebral palsy. <laughs> you say you want to become a footballer. You play football. People do you juju. They do you juju. Your leg will break. Your leg will break. Your leg will break. You will not get a team. The only team you get is second division in Vietnam. You say you don't want to serve God. You say you want to do Big Brother Africa. When you are batting, then they are showing you on TV. Say hundred thousand dollars. Hey, Reverend God, do you know hundred thousand dollars? I know your your foot. Your foot is what I know. <laughs> Pastor Alfred, his delight is in the law. Recently, I was I was in a, I was I was somewhere. I was preaching in a camp, and God gave me one hundred and seventy six effects of the word. One hundred and seventy six. I was on my white throne, and I was writing like a, a, a magnet. And I can take you through. One camp is not even enough for me to teach all. And his delight is in there. And what do I what do I do with my life? You sweat, you learn ACC, you fail first time, fail second time, then you pass third time. Then they'll promote you when they promote you, as they are promoting you, they are also deducting from you. When they promote you, then they'll give you a car that drinks more petrol. At first you are you are in your tico. Oh Agbajena. You are go 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 go. You are not then when you promote them and they give you this thing, Passat. May your delight be in the law of the Lord. No. May I tell myself, I, if I'm able to do one thing in the life of a young person, I've finished. 
and that is to lead a young person to learn how to enjoy God's word. Once I can get you to enjoy God's word, I'm going to. Te- one, of the, one of the things I like about preaching on God's word is that a lot of the things I talk about there are four. Four prophets of the word. I have one. It's called Four Kung Fu Skill Levels of the Word. Kung Fu Skill Levels. Fu Kung Fu. Sk- then I have. <laughs> but one of the things that I like teaching about is four forms in which God's word comes to us. Four. Four forms in which God's word comes to us. I'm sure by tomorrow we'll be getting into that. Before even we get into it, you take up your cross. And and what the cross symbolizes. The first thing that the cross symbolizes is sacrifice. And sacrifice will be there. One of the things that cross symbolizes is, is shame. There is no way you can be in Christ and not feel shame. Ah. Ah. Why? Why are you pretending? As if Christianity is one of the most glamorous religions in the world. That you want to be accepted by everybody. And that is what is now worrying you. That now you are not this thing. So you are worried. I wish people loved me. How to have your quiet time. Everybody write. Now listen to me very carefully because what I'm about to say is, is a very, turn my phone off and just turn it off please. It's one of the crucial points in in um, everywhere I go around the world, if you've listened to my preaching, you realize that on the first night I teach how to have your quiet time. And the next morning what we do is we have morning devotion quiet time, prayer, and so on. And then we give opportunity to people to share their quiet time. Yeah. Now, so far, I have never been anywhere where they called somebody, at least me, I was not there, where they called somebody and the person said, oh, I didn't do my quiet time. If in this camp, we come because tomorrow morning we'll come early in the morning. It's already early in the morning, but we'll come early in the morning. <laughs> we'll come early in the morning. And if they point at you, because you can point, you see the lady in the orange sweater. Yeah, you don't know the color of your shirt. It's for your sister. Eh? Say, you come and share your quiet time. And you stand on your feet and say, I didn't do it. No, uh, notes. I'll pack my things and go home. That's that's my bargain. I'm just telling you before. And trust me, my house is not far from here. Then you can do whatever you want to do. What I'm saying is that please, you know, one of the things that by God's grace, God has done through camps is that it has jump started people into the habit of having quiet time all over the world. All over the world. I know there are people here. They started having quiet time, their quiet time after a camp. And I want it to be a blessing. I don't want it to be a struggle. Amen. Question uh, said, point number one how to have your quiet time? Number one, get a Bible. Get a Bible, number two. Get a notebook. Please, is there anybody in this camp who does not have a Bible? Please. Is there anybody in this camp who does not have a Bible? Do I see any hands up? I 
I'm about to curse so. Number three, get a pen. Number four, get a devotional. Number five, say a prayer. Say a prayer thanking God for the new day. Say a prayer thanking God for the new day. And asking Him to teach you from His Word. Now look at me. What is the cause of malaria? If you know, lift up your hand. Do you know the cause of malaria? Eh? You don't know. Do you know the cause of malaria? It's mosquito. It's mosquito. It's no mosquito. What's the cause of malaria? You don't know. Yes. Plasmodium parasite. Plasmodium parasite. And where is the plasmodium parasite transmitted from? From what? Please, if you know, lift up your hand. I'll call you. Yes, Lois. The female Anopheles mosquito. Is that not so? Okay. When you are infected with plasmodium parasite, what happens to you? If you know, lift up your hand. What happens to you? Nobody knows. Oh, please. You, have you had malaria before? All I'm asking is, what is malaria, malaria like? What is it like? <laughs> yes, Joella. How do you know you have malaria? What are the symptoms of malaria? Number one. Please, lift up your hand and answer. Them. What's, yes, daughter, you can make it. What is it? Headache. Very good. Two. Shivering. Three. Have you had malaria before? Yes. What? How did you feel? You headache, shivering. Three. What? Sleepiness. <laughs> Let me move away from here before I become infected with plasmodium parasite. Yes. Headache. Vomiting, very good. But there's a symptom that I'm surprised nobody has. Very, yes. Nikkei. What? A fever, very good. What is a fever? Because a lot of people do not know what a fever is. A lot of people think that fever is a disease. Fever is not a disease. What is fever? A high temperature. The medical term for a high temperature is a fever. Okay? So fever is different from malaria. These five things, when you have headache, shivering, Vomiting, um, high temperature, and what? Loss of appetite. Not everybody. <laughs> Me when I have malaria, I don't lose my appetite at all. That's when I bathe the fufu even more. Okay, but lots of okay. So when you have these five symptoms, you say, "Mommy, I really suspect." I have malaria. Is that not so? Yes. Very good. And you begin to treat for malaria. Using what? We used to use chloroquine. Now what do we use to treat malaria? What? Atesunate amodiaquine. Do you still use that drug? Quartem. And then atesunate. Alex and they are all generics. Okay, Listen. 
I want to ask you a question. Is there anybody here who has seen Plasmodium parasite before? Okay, stop, stop, stop. Let me ask you the next question. Let me ask you, listen. 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 Why can you not see the Plasmodium parasite? Tell me, please. Tell me, please. Yes. Very small, very good. But is it possible to see Plasmodium parasite? I'm not even saying no. Lift up your hand if you say no. I'm not even saying yes. Uh, more people say yes than no. Esther, is it possible to see Plasmodium parasite? How? I cannot hear you. Under a microscope. Now listen to me. Because I want to, sh- I want to share something that will bless you. A lot of you, when you read God's word, you don't see anything because you are looking with the wrong eyes. Yeah. A lot of you, when you read God's word, you use the same eyes you used to read biology. But God's word is different from a biology textbook. Listen. And the word became flesh. This book, it has walked before. (laughs) And I'm preaching in the wrong place. (laughs) Yeah. This book, this book, this book, this book. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by this book. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. This book. This book is not an ordinary book. And so when you use your ordinary eyes to look into it, it will be like a human being trying to see plasmodium parasite. You can't see. That is why the psalmist in Psalm 119 verse 18 says, Open down mine eyes that I may see. Oh! Ah! But I thought you could see. How can you write a psalm if you cannot see? He was not talking about his physical eyes. You're talking about the spiritual eyes. If you want to have a quiet time, that will be meaningful. You need to ask God to open your spiritual eyes. As for God's word, there are things in it all. So point number five is what? I can't hear. Point number five from the back. And what? And then the verse for that one is Psalm 119 verse 18 and Ephesians 1 17. Point number six. Point number six. Referring to your manual, slowly read the passage for the day. Slowly. Referring to your devotional, slowly read the passage for the day. Point number seven. Point number seven. Ask yourself, what is this passage about?
What is this passage about? Point number eight. Write the answer in your notebook. What is this passage about? Write your answer in your notebook. What number are you on? Eight. What's what's seven? And then eight is write the answer in your notebook. Then number nine. Ask yourself, what did I learn from this passage? Point number 10. Write the answer down in your notebook. Point number 11. Thank the Lord for his word and thank the Lord for his word and pray committing the day into his hands. Thank the Lord for his word and pray committing the day into his hands. Point number 12. Brush your teeth. I'm serious. Brush your teeth. Now again, let me give you an example. Uh, point number 8, 9, 10, and 11. No, seven, eight, nine, and ten. What's point number seven? Everybody, please. Uh, what is this passage about? Now, if my quiet time was from Psalm 1, verse 1, I say, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. What is this passage about? This passage is about three types of people I should not be around. What did I learn? I learned that ungodly people, sinners, and scornful people are dangerous to my life. If you had your quiet time from 1 Corinthians 13, you ask yourself, what is this passage about? You see, this passage is about love. What did I learn? I learned that love trusts all things. Do you see the difference? So in every notebook, you should see these two answers. Very simple. Because you see, a lot of time when you ask somebody to have his quiet time or come and share his quiet time, he shares some revelation that he read from Kenneth Higgins' book. Or you come and tell you about some DVD of T.D. Jakes he went to watch. That's not quiet time. That's something else. We'll come to that. But quiet time is just the simple lesson that you have learned in the morning from God's word. I have my quiet time notebook here. I will not show it to you. Very, You see four lines. Four, but out of those four lines comes, comes. The other day I showed, you know the Dion, you are the prince of this world camp. Yeah. I preached for four days. My notes, one page. One page. If you even see the notes, you will not understand, you will not understand how the, the camp came from these notes. But you will get there in Jesus' mighty name. Take up your cross. If you want to be my disciple. Now, 
uh, point number three is what? Get a pen. And number four is what? Get a devotional. What is the devotional? A devotional is a book where Bible passages have been serialized. That means you have a Bible passage for each day. But in some cases, some of you do not have. And you come and tell me, Reverend Oko, I don't have a devotional, so I could not have my quiet time. It is not true. You can still have your quiet time. How do you do it? What I do, I don't use devotionals much. Once in a while I use, but I don't. What I do is that I take a book of the Bible and start from chapter 1 verse 1. Or I start from a particular chapter and I read bits and pieces every day. Right now I'm reading from, I'm having my quiet time from Mark. And I'm in Mark chapter 3. In fact, what I shared about um, four purposes of discipleship. The first one. That it was my quiet time I think two days ago. Yeah. And it's in the camp. Do you understand what I'm saying? So tomorrow morning, we're going to close now. Tomorrow morning, we are going to come here at 6 o'clock. In fact, not tomorrow morning. This morning, we are going to be here at 6 o'clock. No, no, no. We're not going to come here at 6 We're going to wake up at 6 o'clock. You'll be given 30 minutes to have your quiet time from 6 to 6.30. And then from there, you will come here. Please, when is breakfast? Evelyn, when is breakfast, please? 8 o'clock. Powerful. So we'll come here at 6.30. We'll have a time of praise, worship, prayer, praying in tongues. If you don't pray in tongues, believe God to baptize you in the Holy Ghost tomorrow. You will say amen. Because we are a tongue speaking. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, young people. You are not wiser than God. You are not wiser than God. If God used Joella, don't close your eyes. If you close your eyes, I'll get angry and I won't come again. Open your eyes. Be strong. If anybody should be tired, it's me. Trust me. And pray that I don't get to know your name. If I don't know your name, I'll give you. Daughter, you can make it. Sit up. Daughter. Daughter. <laughs> what was I saying? Am I what was I saying? See? You can't remember. Yeah, God bless you. You can listen. If God decided on the day of Pentecost to use the speaking in tongues as the sign that the Holy Ghost was in a place. We can eh, eh, eh. Eh. Pastor Ben, I've not seen some before. Eh. Like this. It's a level. So we'll have quiet time, sharing of quiet. So you see that we'll have sharing of quiet time for about one hour. And please, your quiet, the sharing of your quiet time should not take more than three minutes. Because when you come, you say, I had my quiet time from uh, Mark 3. From that, I learned the passage was about this. And I learned this. That's all. And you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And I've realized. That when you don't have faith, you know, let's turn our Bibles to you are lying. If you <laughs> if you <laughs> listen, listen. If you come and share your quiet time and you say you've shared your words, turn your Bibles to Matthew 14. Now turn your Bible to First Corinthians. You are lying. You are lying. <laughs> you are coming to show off. Okay. So very simple. All right. Are you blessed? Yes. Now listen. Like I told you, some of you have planned, as you are coming to camp, you have sharpened your pistol. 
as you are coming to camp, you have loaded your gun. Okay. A dog will bite you. Dog. We are all sleeping. Light out will be at 2 a.m. Light out will be 2 a.m. Light out will be when? It will be when? 2 a.m. Please, no talking, no chatting. You see, when I when we are here and I'm trying to preach, then you'll be sleeping. Then when we release you, they begin to scream. Please be very good boys and girls. When we release you, go straight to your beds. Try and catch some rest. Tomorrow we'll be here. Breakfast, 8 o'clock. Can I talk, please? Breakfast, 8 o'clock. We'll have a short break after breakfast. And then we'll continue with the camp. But how many of you are being blessed in this camp? Are you sure? I'm not shaking. I'm not letting go. I thought you were asleep. Everything comes alive in my life as we lift you higher. Let your freedom, let your freedom arise in my life as we lift you up. Sing it out, sing it out. Freedom is here. Future comes alive, and I'm running a 